Hey guys, it's Alex. Today's video is something that is long overdue. I have been working for Lund Racing for a little over uh, six months now and I get a lot of the same questions on the uh, ticket system and so do my co-workers, Brandon, Dakota, and John, um, Nardi, and Marshall, about the N-Gage, how it works, what to do, oh my God, how to data log, how to data log when it's inside one of your event pods, how to data log in general, how do I load a tune, all that stuff. So today's video is going to be all about the Lund Racing N-Gage. When you receive your N-Gage, it will not come preloaded with a tune. Plain and simply, it will not come preloaded with a tune from any dealer. So what you will get is an adapter and a micro SD card that's inside the adapter. So you will need a computer to upload your data logs and to download your tunes. Now, when you stick the adapter into the SD card slot, be careful that that little plastic guy doesn't inadvertently get slid in the down position. If it gets slid into the down position, you'll get a message saying, you know, like uh, the disc is protected. Um, people say, wait, what's going on? I can't load the tune. It's simple. You inadvertently slid that guy down, make sure it's in the up position, and you'll be able to download tunes onto the, uh, the SD card, basically. Once you've uploaded your tune, take the little guy out of the adapter and make sure this guy is facing you, and you'll feel for it right here. Guarantee it'll just kind of slide in. You can use the corner of the adapter. That's what I do all the time. I use the corner of the adapter you'll hear it click in when you want to take it out there you go it's a pretty straightforward process Ooh, easy Alex don't be a, don't be a monkey with this thing there it is perfect so once you get the tune uploaded onto the SD card put it onto the engage we're gonna ask you to take some data logs if you have a decent amount of modifications the way you start data logging is you tap it now more often than not, it will have a configuration file already in there. If not, just ask for a configuration file. We'll get you taken care of. Make sure the key or the button is in the on position. The accessories are on. And you turn your vehicle on real quick. And you're going to go to data logging. Data logging again. Now, here are your configuration files. I have multiple in here. I have three. I have one that's 2011 and up generic, meaning anything 2011 and up, F-150, GT500, everything. I also have a specific EcoBoost file in here, 2011 and up EcoBoost. There's also a generic 05 to 10 file for GT500s and three valves. We are getting away from three valves, but we still do support GT500. Now let's start data logging the Coyote stuff here, 2011 and up Mustang. Now what you're gonna see is this black screen come up and it's gonna have a bunch of numbers moving around. Now, the way you start a data log, you see right here, tap it, the little yellow light starts blinking and you'll see here it says log 53. So when I tap it again, it stops logging. When I tap it again, it starts a brand new log and it says log 54. So every time you do that, you are stopping and starting a brand new log. So I'm gonna keep this log going for a little bit and show you what you can do in the data logging screen. See this little up arrow and down arrow? You can actually select what you can see live, what is happening right now. How much math pounds a minute I'm flowing. Load, 0.17, AFR, air fuel ratio, short term fuel trims and long term fuel trims. I'm about 3% off right now, but the car is cold. VCT intake means your intake cam and I believe your exhaust cam is in there also. VCT exhaust one, intake one, exhaust two, intake two. And if you keep scrolling down, you'll see fuel pump duty cycle. Now SSA, SSB, SSD, that is all automatic transmission stuff. Slip desired. My torque converter slip desired. My actual slip is in there. So you can see many things live as you're data logging. So you are not blindly sampling data logs. You can scroll and you're logging. See, it's still log 54. It hasn't changed. You want to stop logging, you just hit the button. But what we ask for is an idle log for about two minutes and then a neutral rev sweep. Park or neutral if it's a manual and you're slowly going to bring the RPMs from idle to about 5,500 RPM. And then we're going to ask you to let it return to 
idle. Or if you have a good amount of control in the vehicle, you can do step logs. What are step logs? These are step logs. So you go, let's say the 2,000, 2,500, 3,500, 4,500. Those are what we call step logs. Let it come back down to idle for about two minutes and boom, you are done with your idle and slow rev logs. Well also, once we see those logs, we'll ask you to do wide open throttle logs or WOT, W-O-T. So on a manual car, we're gonna want you to be in third gear, advanced track off. Advanced track off in 15 plus is you hold the traction control button up for seven seconds, whether you're driving or not, and you'll see a sign or a little uh, display on the heads up display saying advanced track off. On a manual, third gear, 2000 RPMs, and mash it. I'm saying feel the floor up until the determined RPM that we sent you in the email. Some of us want a 5,000 RPM watt log, 6,000, or if you have been going back and forth on files, we'll ask for something like a 7,000 RPM watt log. That is to see fueling and what it's doing in the upper, upper RPM ranges. So we're gonna ask for an idle, slow rev, or a step log, and then a watt log. And that is basically the same way, tap, touch, go from there. Now I'm gonna show you how to select the PIDs you see on the actual N-Gage. If you're ever in the data logging screen, just click this little X on the top and it brings you back to the main menu. Now let's go and connect our gauges. Let me get out of here and go to gauges and click connect. It will then show PIDs that I have selected that I want to watch, but I'm gonna show you briefly how to select your own. I like looking at my speed, lambda, which is my air fuel ratio. We read them in lambda. My spark, my air charge temp, which is blower temperature on this car, my torque converter slip, and you can see how it moves. OSS is output shaft speed. We are not moving. You will not have output shaft speed. Now there are, I believe, three other screens which you can get to by swiping. Actually, just swipe, same like an iPhone or, a, or any Android device, and you'll have a four matrix screen. You'll swipe again, and you'll have basically a way to set up these little lights and what value. Right now, this, the lights are set up to come on based on lambda. I can change this, okay? I can change the signal to have it be RPM or whatever I want it to read, whether it's output shaft speed or whatever. See, then output shaft speed will be the selected signal and then I can go in here and see which value I want the green light to come on, the yellow light, and then the red light. Pretty straightforward. Let's swipe again. And it's gonna take you to a, sort of like a needle type of screen. And it's called torque control. I can literally make this mile per hour. I can make this whatever I want. Let's do output shaft speed again. So that will move with output shaft speed. It can be RPM, it can be lambda, it can be air fuel ratio, it can be whatever you want it to be. It also has a little smaller gauge on the inside, which you can select and it'll be basically lambda, but you can change that to whatever you want. You can have a big one, the big needle, small needle, and change them. Let's swipe back. So let's say you wanna change the speed signal on the top left to anything else. RPM, voltage, let's go to RPM. So the top left will be RPM. And that's how you change every single signal that you want to change. You wanna change OSS to something else, say no something that reads pretty engine load perfect it should be like 0.17 or 0.16 or something like that or percentage 0.24 perfect so because it's percentage it's going to go to 100 percent load pretty fast because this car sees 2.09 load because it's supercharged and it has it's pulley for about 20 pounds of boost but again there is now no excuse as to how you know when people say how do i change it this is exactly how you change it. If you want to view it in the four matrix screen, you can do it there, you can do it there, or you can do it there. You can access the front port on the actual N-Gage if you want to permanently mount your N-Gage, and I'll show you how to do that real quick. If you have this permanently mounted, let's say right here, a lot of you guys mount your N-Gage in this pod. 
you can, you know, you're going to say, well, I can't access the SD card. It's on the side here. I can't get it because it's inside my gauge pot or my uh, little AC vent. Well, if you go to diagnostics, and if you have a adapter that goes here, like an old BlackBerry, I believe this is a micro or a mini. Sorry if I'm not exactly sure, but obviously it's like an old BlackBerry one. You go to diagnostics and USB SD card, boom. And it immediately activates this front port. If you have it hooked up, hooked up to a laptop, you will see it come on and you can access the SD card internally without having to remove the end gauge from your AC vent if you have it permanently mounted. Okay, one last thing I have not yet played with on the end gauge, it is changing the uh, miles per hour. Now, a lot of you guys that have an automatic, a lot of people tend to upgrade the differential from a 315 to a 331 or a 355. So I believe you can manipulate that in here. So if you go to tuning and I believe it will say module config, okay? Module config. Turn key on, do not start engine. Okay, let me turn this off. Key on. And let's see what it does. We'll learn together. Use at your own risk. These parameters may damage your vehicle. Press check mark to accept responsibility. <laughs> Found six blocks, two parameters. Next screen will allow you to edit them. So, in here, you can set your tire height. Excellent. I didn't know this, so we're learning together. So a lot of you guys that run a 305 this or 30, you know, whatever, 305, you got to make sure you go to... Um, if you type in tiresize.com on the internet or on Google search or any uh, web browser, it should take you to a you know little calculator. Perfect, nothing to write. I didn't change anything. Tire height inches, nothing to write. Perfect. Okay, so I'll just exit out of there. Axle ratio, 315, because this is an automatic. So you can change that in here. You can add or subtract. You see, oh, look at that, perfect. I'm gonna leave it right back where it was. I think that's it and tire height axle rate there it is so in there you can change your revs per mile and your axle ratio and you should be good to go in case you ever need to change anything uh, based on a axle change in the back hopefully this video helps you guys out figure out little tips and tricks on the engage permanently mounting them you can still access the SD card you do need a computer to upload and download tunes and I actually showed you how to change the axle ratio and tire size to get your uh, speedo more accurate based on gps because a lot of you guys want that accurate speedo and i totally get it so thanks for listening guys to this quick little video on the engage i'll be bringing you more videos tutorials as they come along any frequently asked questions make sure you ask them in the comment section i'll do my best to answer them thanks for listening we'll talk to you later